Hello everybody and welcome to Vicky Patterson, The Secret 2. This week I am joined by Meme Lord, podcaster and ultimate hun, it's Gareth Howells everybody. Woo! Hi huns, hey hun, how are you? I'm all right, babe. How are you? I'm very good. Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I've been watching um, your the episodes of your podcast back and I, I ha- I've got kitchen envy and now seeing it like in the flesh, I'm like... Yeah, so I mean, if all I'm going to get out of this is to have kitchen porn over your kitchen, this is going to be the best day of, my, of, of the week. You fucking smooth talk. <laughs> I love what I'm doing. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? Like when you get to a certain age and like, you know, you talk about people's clothes back in the past or don't you look great? And now we're all like complimenting each other on each other's kitchens. I swear to God, somewhere. <laughs> and I think it happened really sneakily, like... I went from being like wild and crazy and loving going out and kissing boys and like, you know, like you say, spending all of my money on clothes to being like, oh, can't you think that toast? I'll go with the island overnight, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the weirdest part about it is, Gareth, I don't hate it. No, I don't. Do you know what? So before the pandemic, I used to have a little car and I say a little car because um, not many people know this about me, but I'm six foot four and <laughs> I, I'm six foot four. You're a tall man. So tall. But I, I used to have this little car. I, so I I learned to drive in a really small car. I am going somewhere with this, I promise. I learned to drive in this really small car. <laughs> Um, and basically I'm like afraid of big cars now. So I used to, when I had my little car outside, um, like on a Saturday afternoon, it went from being like going to McDonald's drive through to what I now call the Dunelm loop. Um, and it's like getting in the car <laughs> and like at one o'clock, just going up to Dunelm. And this was like a weekly occurrence until yeah, I got yeah. rid of my car, going up to <laughs> Dunelm, fingering the fabrics, you know, checking out all the inspirational quotes on the, so, uh, you know, on, on the, on the cushions. Um, and then, yeah, it, it, but you're right. It just went like that, like overnight. Well, how did this happen? Why did I become this person? Yeah. So I remember in particularly like my late teens thinking that, oh, I didn't, I knew all the doormen. I knew all the barmen. I didn't have to queue to get a drink. Yeah. Like I didn't have to pay to get into a club. I remember thinking like, oh my God, like I've got life figured out. Yeah. And I'm never, and I was out four nights a week, Gareth, you know, and I was yeah. like, I'm never going to be one of those people who, I'm just not, I'm not a stay at home person, you know, this was my ignorance when I was like yeah. sort of younger. And like, honestly, all of a sudden I became the person that I was dreading being and I fucking love her. Yeah. I love but- her. How did it go from knowing all the doormen on your favourite club to knowing the cashier until three at Dunelm? How did it happen? How did it happen? Oh, babe, I don't know. But all I know is that this version of us, I feel like they're probably, well, mental health's probably a lot better. Yep. But I just feel like I'm more content, you know? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's all about balance. I think, like, previously, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've recently turned 40 and, you know, I'm not ashamed Fuck to say off. that. Yeah, I yeah. You, well, I mean, I'm saying that I'm 35 this year, but you're, look, I was going to, I just thought we were the same age. It's, you look it's, amazing. It's, it's, it's a good filter and it's a good light in front. Mm. Um, no, do you know what it is? Um, when I turned 40, I had this, I had this like thing for years about, oh God, I'm 40. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Oh, I shouldn't be going out and everything. But um, I think it's a bit of a balance. I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie. It was bank holiday weekend recently and I got out of Heaven Nightclub at quarter past five. And I'm not ashamed <laughs> to say it. I'm not ashamed to Good say it. Good for you. But I also, you'll also find me on a Wednesday night down being q looking at light bulbs that I want to buy. So, yeah. But I think, I think it's... on over park at Florida. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really getting off on the, <laughs> on the fake plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's I think it's about balance though isn't it and I think you know it's 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 I still remember that person who was out four or five times a week but you know I think you probably probably agree with me you can't do it now so yeah no, no and honestly like you're so right I think w- finding balance is is important sure. in every sort of arena of your life you know whether it's like enjoying going out once in a while but also loving a bit of home life whether it's having some takeaways and then also you know yep. some clean living sometimes <laughs> I think it's super important but you're right mate like I so recently Georgie Shaw um all went back together for like some sort of 10-year reunion um and I, I consider that a sort of chapter of my life to be probably yeah. well and truly over and like it was 
great while it lasted it's given me the platform I've got today eternally grateful but yeah I was like oh no there's just no way I'm coming back and everyone is I'm getting some messages of people thinking like oh do you think you're too good blah blah, blah. no I do not think I'm too good for Jodie Shaw if anything like I just can't keep up babe yeah I have I was at a wedding on Saturday I had three glasses of champagne like it was quite yeah. a long like reception before the canopies came out and then I had to have three cheeseburgers <laughs> three, I, had, I, had to, I had to have a cheeseburger for every glass because I just can't do it anymore like, but, but the, the age we're at right exactly but I think you know I think you know you mentioned about going back you know you've built something like massive after that that for you to go back and to just slip into that it'd be you playing a role so it's like this is you being authentic to yourself but I have got a question with you about cheeseburgers. So okay. I've, got, <laughs> I've got this thing. Right? That coming. No, I have because it's just made me think of something. I feel like I'm on a downward spiral with cheeseburgers because four four or five years ago, mm-hmm. a single cheeseburger, you know, when they were doing them for 79, 79p, fine. Yeah. A couple of years later, double. I am now a triple cheeseburger. Cu- triple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they did a quadruple, I'd do it. Yeah. yeah. So, so I feel like I've definitely got to cut off. I'm with you. Don't yeah. get us wrong. I'm definitely a more is more person. <laughs> but I think I've got to cut off when it comes to meat. And when I tried, do you ever get the double Big Mac? Uh, yes. A right. double quarter pound or more, more so for me was, was right. my thing. Big Mac's too bready. I, 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 like, I like meat on meat. Oh, OK. So <laughs> I'm really worried you have no cut off then. Yeah, actually. no, this is it. But um, when they did the double Big Mac, so it was the four burgers, uh-huh. I felt like that was too much meat for me. So yeah. I think four patties is actually me cut off. And I was yeah. really hoping that would be yours too. But hearing your meat <laughs> on meat, man, I think you fucked me. Well, this is it. Yeah, yeah. Lovely to meet everyone. You'll, you'll find me in a meat coma sweating in the corner in a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> I could do the same with carbs. Like I've yeah. got no problem having bread on bread on yeah. bread. Oh, and then pasta as well. What were we talking about again? <laughs> Life balance. <laughs> Tip in the off. balance. <laughs> oh, babe, I am so grateful you've agreed to come on the podcast today. And I feel like for everyone who is living under a rock and doesn't know exactly who you are, please explain a little bit about yourself. So um, my name's Gareth. As, um, as, <laughs> I'm not Scouse, as we thought. Um, I'm from Wales. And um, I got this Instagram page, which is which is uh, called Huns. Iconic. Oh, thank you. That's Let's very have kind. have it right. <laughs> oh, that's very kind. Um, and it's called Hunsnet. And basically, it's um, it's memes and it's looking at you know, British, quintessentially British situations and things that people who identify as a Hun, because I do believe that, you know, like there's demographics, you know, you've got different types of walks of life for people. I believe that people who identify as a, as a, as a Hun mm. are a certain demographic and they should have things catered for them. You know, if you're a Hun, you're a Hun. So you want places to go. You want, you know, you want TV programs to watch. You want podcasts to listen to. You want books to read. Yeah. And I just think that this, you know, particularly over the last few years that we've had, because apparently it's been quite shit, you know, <laughs> in the news landscape, I think there's been this like emerging some sub- subculture of people who just want to have a bit of a laugh and like, you know, look at the lighter side of life. Um, but also I think, you know, in these in these times of trouble of everything that we've gone through, the Panny D and, you know, the cost of living and the government changing lineup like the sugar babes, you know what? It's people go, pe- I think people have latched onto nostalgia and especially people like, who know, you know, grown up with social media, we don't necessarily always want to see like the polished version of celebrity and things like that. So I think we're hung culture and 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 pages like Hansnet, there's some other amazing pages out there as well, which I'm sure you all know who they are. Mm. Um, you know, it's all about celebrating some of those unfiltered moments in our lives and celebrities' lives as well, and just actually just not taking yourself too seriously and just having a bit of a laugh with it. And my page just sort of celebrates that really with just stupidness. No, it's honestly so good. I'm literally, between me and my friends, like we're at the age where, again, you we don't communicate at all. Yeah. We just send each other memes. Yeah. Like we're all busy. We've got kids, dogs, husbands, whatever. So yes, we just send memes. And it is your page, Punsnet, gets constantly sent around the DMs. I believe, honestly, I think it's between yours and Fat Tony's. Yeah. Who I receive more of. It's it's brilliant. Like Fat Tony is one of my, like, 
just read his book. Amazing. Love for anyone that. who's not read it. Um, he, I, I listened to him on uh, on your podcast. I think he's great. He says, tells such a, a candid story. Um, you know what? And he, he ain't afraid to drop in the sea bomb either, which I like every now and again. <laughs> he's, he's real. Um, but yeah, it's just about like, I think that these are ways of, you know, sometimes when you communicate with people, you know, it's not, hey, how are you? You're okay. You know, you send a meme and people go, you make somebody laugh yeah. or, you know, and it's just that thing that breaks up your day now as opposed to you know chit chat or you know rubbish chat on the on on Instagram small talk and shit yeah Uh, none of that shit it's so lovely and I didn't think of it that way Gareth but like you are actually in a time like like you say the last couple years have been really difficult yeah and I think you are actually bringing so much joy to people's lives and reminding us of like I think a simpler time like I loved early 2000s I love 90s like I feel like those are my eras I think so I have this thing I say this all the time I say back in the day now back in the day to me could be like last week or 1997 it could be anywhere <laughs> in between those two pillars like to keep it big <laughs> yeah exactly yeah just committal um <laughs> and I think you know when I when I think about you know what I call the hun years this is I, I like to I think about this quite a lot, genuinely. And I think it's like, (laughs) this is so stupid. I think it's like the last time, because you've got to remember that social media sort of all kicked off in the beginning of, of, of the 2000s. And it was the time when we literally lived our life on Facebook, you know, and, mm. and and put everything, what you were feeling. And then there was that time where it started to switch and it all became so filtered and so mm. unattainable and, you know, all kind of... All just a bit too perfect. Yeah, all a bit too perfect. And I think what Hun culture and some of this is, which is why it's all so kicking off at the moment, is people are, people are going, well, well, I know what this is, but I do remember that time... Mm when, you know, people were falling outside of cabs outside China White. And weren't that funny when, you know, Kerry Katona got pictured with a kebab in, you know, and, and I think I think there's a real innocence to the time because yeah. at the time you're thinking, you know, you'd never, you know, you'd never do it now, unironically. Mm. Mm. But I think it's that last time where we were on, on online, in, but just... Innocent a bit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it, it, sounds, yeah. so cr- it sounds so crazy that I'm saying innocent because we're saying like falling out of cars, yeah. wearing belts as dresses. Oh, Jodie Marsh, love, love it. her for that. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I, I think now I look at all these like, and God, I love Love Island, you know, and I look at it, but they all just are coming out so glossy, so media trained, so perfectly behaved. Yeah. And I think... I do, in a sense, miss those days of like Jodie Marsh and Jordan having crazy spats. Oh, God, yeah. But I think it was the way that the media felt, you know, sort of fueled into it at the time, you know, like, you know, it was even back in the day with like, you know, Blur versus Oasis, you know, I know that was like back in the 90s, but it was like, oh, which side you want, you know, all of that. And it's just when you look back now and you've got life experience and you look at it and you think, oh, my God, that was just so silly but it was so funny at the same time. But also I think, you know, you'll know this from, from, from your reality um, TV experience, you know, like you just said, is that reality TV back then was, it was a lot, a lot less scripted, a lot less, you know, let's just turn the cameras on and see what happens. And I think that that's where you find some of those really amazing moments. Like one of my favorite things that I've unearthed recently, I unearthed, it's always been there, but, but it, but it's coming to my conscious again. Do you remember Mo from driving school, the lady who was learning to drive the Welsh lady, and they did this reality TV show, like where they learned her to drive. No. That's been like, that's bit honestly just revisit Mo from driving school. Basically, it's this woman I think who's in her sixties and she's learning to drive, and she's literally having this fucking meltdown in a metro trying to learn to drive, and it's just so brilliant TV. But but that would never happen now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's just brilliant. Like all the all the reality TV from back in the day. I think there's some real real good moments. Oh, there is. And honestly, I've forgotten some of them. And when I'm going through your page, I'm like, oh my God, that was fucking brilliant. That was unreal. I think you're honestly doing a service. You are. You really are. That's very kind. That's very (laughs) kind. Do you know what? Do you you know what I remembered actually yesterday? And do you remember the original Love Island with, with the original Love Island? Gareth, we had 
Paul Denan on the podcast. You did. And that's what made me remind it, actually. Yeah. One of my favorite things about the original Love, Love Island was check out the promo shots of, of that, right? So basically, sure. they're, they're, they're against a backdrop with, yeah. they're, they're not on the island, they're quite clearly <laughs> not on the island. They're, they're on a backdrop with some fake tan, uh, fake sand, uh, loads of fake tan. Yeah, probably. And, and then all you've got to do, that's so all I'm going to say, is check out the boy's denim choice. Because there yeah. is just oh. some, it's just, it's just bootcut jeans. Um, I think Patrick Keelty's on this fake sand in yeah. bootcut jeans and a nice brown shoe. It's just, oh, yeah. Lovely. I want to say, um, please tell me there's lots of like faded ripped denim as well. There's lots of faded ripped denim. Great. Okay. Didn't want to be disappointed. Faded ripped denim for me is like my arch nemesis because I take the piss out of it now. But, yeah. but there is definitely footage, pictures and experiences of me from back in the day rocking it and thinking I'm looked 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 amazing but clearly Unreal. not. Unreal I think I I was do you remember the era that was faded with denim and then yeah. like a very like multicolored clashing like baseball something jacket oh, like stunning. shiny though it had to be really shiny. Yeah dead glossy and then it would literally like like nylon it would turn your tv on if you walk past it. <laughs> <laughs> And then, <laughs> if you were really balling, an Ed Hardy hat. Oh, oh stunning, Just stunning. Give me remember, rhinestones. Give do, me you remember, do you remember when, um, when, when, um, like, male fashion was, like, bootcut jeans, but they were longer than your actual legs, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. they always got wet, and then you stepped on them, and they were all frayed at the back. Yeah. But then you'd think, oh, why not put this with a pinstripe blazer? And then I said, there were so many unnecessary, like, Things that me, that men used to put around their neck, and I'll tell you who were the culprits of this. Blue, blue, the boy <laughs> band. When you look back at Blue's pictures from back in the day, there is so many unnecessary neck garments on those boys. What, like, a, like a, um, like a neck, neckerchief, or like, like a neckerchief, like a, like a, a, a ratty scarf. Yeah, mm. they're all there. I remember the scarf period. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh man, honestly, I could sit and talk to you about things. That, but then you know. I remember really fancying boys who did the whole shirt, then like a cardi, then a blazer over the top and like a crucifix. Stunning. Yeah, because because yeah. just so you can feel I close to God. Yeah, I can't tell you how many <laughs> lads like that are shagged me. <laughs> <laughs> it was the crucifix which drew you in, right? I just felt like, it oh, was... you must be a good boy. Just doing God's work. <laughs> Yeah, son, that has ruined you. <laughs> <laughs> but keep the crucifix on, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you can leave your crucifix on. <laughs> oh, mate. On that note, I'm going to say end of part one. I want to get you back in part two and talk all things hun. Is that okay? Let's do it. Why not? <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to part two of Vicky Patterson and the Secret 2. This week I am joined by Hunsnet creator and ultimate hun, Gareth Howells. Welcome back, pop it. Hi hun, how's you? I'm good. I, am really, <laughs> I feel like I have this huge list of questions that my um, producer painstakingly creates for every guest and then all I do is get too excited that I have someone great on and talk about shite. So should we do some questions? Let's do some questions. Okay, amazing. So obviously you have built this incredible brand, but I want to know what it is to you to be a hun, what it means. I think being a hun um, is somebody who just doesn't take themselves a bit serious, too, too seriously, yeah. um, has got a good group of friends around them, that you've mm. got a good buzzing group chat going. You're not afraid to go out on a Wednesday night and have a couple of bottles of Zinfandel down all bar one, turn up to work the next day hanging, but just like trying to like, you know, just breeze through getting on. Um, I think it's people who are like a, you know, celebrity obsessed, you know, who love reality shows, people who quote reality shows as well, because it's like, you know, that's a massive part of this whole hung culture things is like quotes and moments and, and things like that. Smash all that together, stick on the jeans and a nice top. Um, and I think that's, that, that's definitely hun. Now, the other thing I'll say on it, though, is that that is quite like female centric as well. But Anyone can be a Hun. I think I think the great thing about Hun culture and this the nice part about it is this is like this real crossover point between, you know, straight culture and LGBTQ culture, yeah. like smashed together as well. So I think that's that's definitely a big part of it as well. I, I think after listening to your list, Gareth, I am a Hun. 
I, I knew you would be. I'm I definitely you, a hun. You are. Do you, but, but would you unashamedly like identify as a hun? Do you hun, yeah. do you hun your friends? Is it, how many, if, if we search hun in your group chat, would it literally be like hun, 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 hun? Yeah, there'd yeah. be so many huns. But also as well, I feel like there's this really negative connotation that's recently started to come with hun. And it's almost like you only hun someone if you're angry with them. Ooh. You know, it's kind of passive aggressive, like, oh, I don't know about that hun. But I, I'm, I use hun like, are you okay, hun? Like, I love it. So I, I, th- I think, no, 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 I'm a good hun and I only use it in a good way. I think, I think that's the, the danger when you write it, isn't it? Because you can yeah. never hear the tone. And that's why voice notes is, voice, voice messaging is good because you can just, you can, you can definitely put the hun in context and people, people are like, is she hunning me? Is she hunning me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I only ever hun anybody. I don't hun anybody. Yeah. No, no hun, not hun. <laughs> <laughs> you sure, hun? I don't do that. I think it's the eyes, the eyes that go with it as well. So it's like, hun, hun. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm a proud hun, actually, after yeah. hearing that. And like, I always do look for a good Zinfandel when I'm doing yeah. the shop. A nice Grenache. Oh, Something... the blush are the better for me. Yeah, yeah. No, I see, see, I've got it. I've, this is a confession, you know, like, big part of hun culture and, and huns they love prosecco i can't do it i can't do prosecco anymore give me a headache nah it's 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 the bloody heartburn i'm i'm like glass of prosexy shot of gaviscon <laughs> oh tell me you're getting old about you're getting old. <laughs> i'm honestly my mom my mom is an ultimate fun by the way yeah oh. Hun royalty. Yeah. I, I, I think like our mums who are huns, they're like they're hun royalty because they could that you know they could be total huns with you down all bar one, but they're all they're also happy to look at the huns, go at it and just go and just get involved. Wistfully, wistfully, wistfully observed from yeah. afar. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my mum is an ultimate and she is mad for a prosecco um and can do it all day, all night without so much as getting a sore head the next day. But me, three glasses. And you won't get my head off the pillow. Well, this is it. But uh, hopefully you have a nice inspirational quote on the on the pillow, though, to keep you there and to, to talk oh, you back to life. A little bit of live, laugh, love. <laughs> live, laugh, love. Life's not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. My friend's got a tattoo of that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you know what I've said this before, but I have got a I've got a rubbish tattoo which Come I was on, like. What is so, it? so I'm so I've got. I've got the same tattoo that Mel B's got on her stomach on my on my what shoulder. She got? Is it like a Chinese symbol? It's like yeah, it's like a Japanese symbol which says spirit. And I, I was thinking like throughout my 30s, I was like, perhaps it's time to get it like, you know, you know, lasered off. And I'm like, nah, this is a badge of honor. This stick is with, true, hun. Dick with it, mate. Yeah. I also think as well, my pal got like um tribal on her back when it was cool to have that. And she's now in the process of getting it removed because it covers a whole back. And she has described it as um like getting hot oil dripped on you. Ooh. Some men pay good money for that though. Oh man, <laughs> oh, no. not for me. No, no, no definitely not for me. Oh, yeah. Stick with it, me, because it's painful. And like you say, it represents a part of your life, you know. I just feel like me, me and Mel B's got this connection. Yeah. She, she doesn't feel the same, but I, I, I feel connected <laughs> to her. <laughs> right. How have you got? Who's the most famous hun who follows you? Because I feel like you must have some good celeb fans now. Oh, right. So um, the most random one um, who follows me, not necessarily my, the most famous, but the most random hun who follows me is Lucrezia Millerini. From the ITN News. She is total hun. And I never knew it. I never knew it. But she is like first one on the like. She's first one on the comment. She's brilliant. So Lucrezia Millery, Lucrezia is um is definitely there. But randomly, um, I think I've got like Luke Evans, you know, like the the oh, from, from, dish, from yeah. it, from Steps. No, that's oh. Ian H. Watkins. No, Lee Latchman. Oh, Lee, oh, oh, I thought you said oh, Lee Latchman. No, Lee doesn't Lee doesn't actually follow me. The rest of steps do, but Lee doesn't. I don't know what I've done to Lee, but it doesn't matter. Um, no, I'm talking about Lee, Luke, Luke Evans, you know, um, the, the Welsh actor is in the new Pinocchio and he was Gaston in the in the remake of Beauty and the Beast. Oh my oh. god, he's absolutely lost. He's so dishy, isn't he? Come on, was he Horatio Hornblower? He might have been, yeah. Right, I'm Googling. Yeah. Right. Actually, Elif, will you Google for me and find out if yeah. he's Horatio Hornblower? Because he is a lovely bit of kit. Yeah, he is. He oh, is. no, he wasn't. I'm thinking of someone else, but I do know who this one is. He was in the... um, He was in the... 
dramatic re, a re reimagining of the um the, pe the people who killed somebody oh god i'm taking this down a very dark path I own, so I I know him from he he was he was in Beauty and the Beast as Gaston and he, I think he's now Geppetto in the new Pinocchio, um, but he's yes. also yes, yes babe, and right and what I'm talking about was the Pembrokeshire murders. Yes, 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 because he's Welsh. She because he's he's also Welsh. She's from Abergavenny. Oh, um, babe, he's yeah. unreal. Yeah. Yeah, so he follows me, which is, and the only reason I know that is because I, because like I follow him back, and so he pops up all the time. Basically, I'm stalking Luke Evans on. Uh... <laughs> it sounds as though the yeah. stalking is very mutual. If yeah, I'm well, I wish, I wish, I wish. <laughs> um, yeah, who else? Um, obviously, like Ruth Langsford is a big. Uh, Ruth is just Ruth is the ultimate hun. I think mm. Ruth, Ruth, Vic, the only person uh, like I've got this holy trinity of huns that I love, and it's Ruth. Lisa Scott Lee and Vicky B for all those for all different reasons. What I a trinity. Always, I always say Vicky B pop off. And I just get such a kick out of the fact that you call her Vicky B. And like <laughs> you because obviously her iconic hun era yeah. was when her and Bex were doing the matching fashions, yeah. was when she was giving it, you know, doing collabs with Dane Bowers. Choppy way, Bob, the choppy oh, Bob. The bandana. The, the bandana. Shape, yeah. Yeah. All of that. And when you repost stuff like that, I just think, I hope she looks at this and has a giggle at herself. I know I do too. Like what I do sometimes as well. Like I don't, this is quite, this makes me quite, sound quite unhinged. When she does, her, when she does her like, like little lives and she's doing all of her new makeup brand, which looks amazing by the way. Um, she, um, I always just like put in her comments, like a really random question. So the other, the other day I, I was like, Vic, love the new makeup line but would just love to know what your favorite pot noodle is <laughs> and it's like <laughs> and i'm just hoping one day she's going to reply to me with bombay bad boy oh yeah yeah i mean i'm really boring i just like that chicken one Oh yeah, chicken and mushroom. My boyfriend had a go at me the other day. It was because I, because we have recently got back into pot noodles. That's a that's a whole different episode. Let's not talk about that. Um, but um, yeah, he was like, I can't believe you brought home the chicken and mushroom, and I'm like, don't get snobby over pot noodles. It's um a classic. It I'm is a, a classic. Purist. It's a I classic. Yeah, God. I did get sent a Donna kebab um, pot noodle the other day, though, and it literally tasted like a Donna kebab because I do love a Donna kebab. I'm not gonna lie. How did you feel about that? When something tastes like something, but the texture doesn't echo it, I get upset. Yeah, now now you've now you've reflected that on me, and now I'm gonna go and have a sit in the toilet and think about this for a long, <laughs> long while with the lights off. <laughs> Is this my refined palate, Gareth? Oh, what can I say? Damn. <laughs> Get on this. I'm obviously trying to get really into your hun bad <laughs> But um, I know your hun good books. When we um, were promoting Geordie Shaw once, and obviously we were well known for getting quite yeah. pissed and ha having a kebab, our um, campaign trail, should we say. Do you know what I know what, the, I know what you know, this is. I, go on, but go on. When we were going around all the journalists, we created a kebab perfume. Yeah. And I had to, like, go around, like the 3 a.m. girls' office <laughs> in London <laughs> with this fucking freezing cold kebab. Um, and I would open it and inside would be the kebab scent and I had to like spray them with it. And honestly, that is a memory that will live with me forever. So when people ask me why I'm not going back to Geordie Shaw, it's things like that that have haunted me, quite frankly. <laughs> I have a question for you though, like because there are some iconic moments from or Geordie Shaw. How would you feel if they were turned into memes? Now, are you can are, are you kind of would you kind of be like, oh no? What what would be your thoughts? Because that is always one of my things with the celebrities when you unearth these um, these moments from the past. How would you feel about it? Well, so uh, Elif, my producer, um, she literally sent me my um, on TikTok. She sent me because she's always sending me huns net ones yep. on um, Insta. But yeah, on TikTok, she sent me. Um, Ferrero Rocher while you wait lads which is something I said in series one yeah. um, and I don't mind like obviously I die a little bit inside the hair extensions the tan everything yeah. um but yeah I mean I don't I feel like I feel really flattered is that bad yeah a lot of people who I've spoken to on the podcast because I'm always a bit like sometimes when you know it there is a fine line and I I'm you know i when you put out content like this, you know, sometimes you don't know the context in some of the ways that these mm. shots were taken. And a lot of them are pap shots from back in the day and stuff. And also as well, you know what, 
the last few years we've gone through like massive changes on what's acceptable and what's not and everything of like course, that so yeah. so so it's it's constantly a learning thing but sometimes you know um you know it what you've just said is what a lot of the celebrities will message me go oh you bastard i can't believe you unearthed that or <laughs> there was a thing where um where where samia from from coronation street i found her doing holly valance on start celebrity stars in oh, their eyes I, yeah i thought she was incredible she though. was brilliant and she was like i can't believe you found this i thought this was lost forever but you know what she was like you've got to laugh at it and you you know you've got to laugh at it and I think I think the whole thing about this hun thing and something that I've definitely learned over the last you know sort of three four years is that it's definitely the laughing with not laughing at and I think yeah I think it's I think it's you know um you know and 99.9999999 percent of people who've been involved in it have been absolutely fine you know if somebody messaged me and was like oh god I can't believe you used that I you know please take it down and be like oh, of course yeah straight away no problem because you don't want that you know no and it's not clearly not what you're about you're super yeah. light-hearted it's a bit of nostalgia you're designed to your page is designed to like bring people together build a bit of co yeah. community and make people feel good and laugh so I got I can't imagine you'd ever want any sort of animosity between no. like, the people and the memes you post. But did you anticipate, Gareth, it was going to turn into like what it has because it spawned a brunch. You've got your book out. Like, you're yeah. flying this. Do you know what? Um, some days it's it's just crazy. I mean, because, you know, prior to this, I had a um, I had a bit of a corporate background and Hunsnet sort of exploded for me during lockdown. Lock, lockdown? Lockdown? Should we all move to lockdown? No, <laughs> lockdown. Um, and it exploded to me because it came from a place, I'll be honest with you, I was in a bit of a desperate place because I had this corporate career, which I was, I'd, I'd worked in for, for many years. And just before the pandemic hit, I changed to a new um, new company working back in London where I live. Um, and then the pandemic hit. And the pandemic hit at a time where I'd only been in this job for nine days. Um, oh, wow. And I was in this really precarious situation of, um, I would, I, I wasn't, I couldn't have furlough because of the time I was in employment. And I literally was at a bit of a sink or swim moment. I was yeah. like, I need to pay my mortgage. I need to pay my bills, you know, all of that. And I was like, right, what have I got? And I had this, I had about 20, 30,000 followers at that point. And I was like, do you know what? let's okay. see what we can do with this it, yeah yeah and 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 it was it, and it was through that sort of oh shit moment really that that it was kind of like right and that's when I really started looking at who was following me what the trends they were doing what did they want to listen to um you know what were the things that they wanted to do and then I've just sort of like always just been gone back to the the insight I know this sounds like corporate but like back into the insights of people who are these people what are they doing what have they experienced and that's just led like led me on to the next step and I just always think like you know my book came out a few weeks ago and it's just it's just crazy sometimes I just look at it and go this is just all silly because it, it's something which actually came from a place which was quite tricky in my life and and it's to see it flourish and people get joy from it I'm, I'm very very lucky but then as well, you know, it brought a lot of people light and laughter at a time when there wasn't a lot going begging, mate. Yeah, I know. But, Shit, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I remember lockdown just being such a, And there was lovely... I think we've all romanticised it slightly yeah. now. We're back at work and back in, like, the yeah. hustle and bustle. But there was some really, like... It, I remember Instagram and social media in particular being fraught with yeah. tension and yeah. you didn't know what you could say and it felt like you were always walking on eggshells so in a time when everyone was feeling slightly anxious it was lovely to have something just very innocent and fun and just yeah. to have a good laugh at so yeah I think you it might have been good for you but you've definitely saved a lot of people as well oh no that's very very kind and I, I, the great thing about it is is that it's this like I say it's this real cross-section of people who when we do our events and things like that there's all of the you know there's mums who's got kids and they've met up with their girls or this was the first time that they've been out you know out of lockdown and you know there's people who are meeting up with their uni friends and it's just a real sort of cross-section of people who come together under this sort of massive hun umbrella which is sort of far and wide of 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 spreading it you know so many people are underneath it but when they all come together you know getting in a room dancing to cascada and just you not giving a shit you know it's brilliant when is your next hun brunch because like i have to be there so we do them like once a month um, in uh, in london and then we do them sort of um out of london once a month as well but we haven't done one in Newcastle yet. And everybody says that it would absolutely go off in Newcastle. Mate. 
it would fly because I think even I think even if a woman in Newcastle wasn't most of them weren't aware that they, yeah. of this hun culture, they'd inadvertently be hun. Yeah. Yeah, are, absolutely. You know, I think it's so 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 yeah, should we do it? Oh yeah. well, come. Yeah, well let's let let's do let's do a let's do a hun collab <gasps> in Newcastle. <laughs> have you got any more of that kebab scent hanging in the in, in the cupboard? <laughs> I'll have to dig it out, mate. Yeah, I'll it. bring that and some Ferrero Rochers. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> She's back <laughs> for one night. This could be this could be one your Jordan. <laughs> this one could night. be this could be your Geordie Shaw reunion, like reincarnated in a different way. <laughs> it could be my moment, my homage to fun. Oh, I'm fucking buzzing. Right, we're doing it. I'm going to message you after. Let's get it in. But then tell me a little bit about your podcast as well. You've had some really good guests. I remember listening to Rylan and his anecdote about Scylla Black's villa. She's I a was... journalist, ladies and gentlemen, not a blind date at all. <laughs> I, whenever that pops up, I'm always... Is there anywhere I can watch old blind dates? Because I would love to. I think they've got some on. Um, I think they've got some on uh, on YouTube, <gasps> but there must w- there must be one on one of the streaming channels. There must. Well, why what? why not? Why not? We we sort of campaigned and got footballers' wives back on, so perhaps we could do it with bright blind date. Perhaps they'll bring it back though, like they've done with Big Brother and and, and Gladiators. Well, they, they tried. Oh, know, they did. They, they did. They did try and get. Do you want to hear some words? So I auditioned to bring that back. Uh-huh. And it was just after the jungle. So I was super current and everyone was like, oh, what can Vicky Patterson host? <laughs> and they brought me in. And honestly, it looked like it was going to happen. Yeah. It was. Uh, so even, so, I think it was still a son or grandson got behind us and was like, Vicky's perfect, you know. She's just like, she's very like Scylla. She's open and honest and yeah. down to earth and blah, blah. And I thought, fucking hell, I've got this job. <laughs> and then Paul O'Grady got a hold of it and he was oh. like, oh, no, I want to do it. And, of course, he was our best friend. Yeah. So, yeah, it was so long. Vicky. Yeah. And hello, but- Paul. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think if, if if it could come back, perhaps that wasn't your time, but it I might come, it might come. I honestly believe there's a, t- like, the universe will bring you what's meant for yeah. you, and it wasn't meant for me. And, you know, I, I probably think I should uh, walk before I run in terms of presenting, and I, I think something like that was probably a bit too much show for me at the time. I would have been terrified. And imagine if I'd fucked it. Oh, my God. I couldn't cope with being the <laughs> you- person that went, like, that ruined like you- it. You'd ever be haunted by Scylla coming back from Casserole. She's which... not a presenter, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen. She's a shit house. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you could present Vicky, but you didn't, did you? <laughs> you fucked it. <laughs> uh, oh. the, I, my, Ryland's obsession with that moment. Oh. I love Ryland's obsession with that moment. Yeah. Ryland's just done um, uh, this morning with Ruth. Um, for a week. What a week. What, what a, a week. week. Was, I was brilliant. Get them on there all the time. I loved it. Um, oh, and um, and yeah, and when 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 that Scylla Black quote sneaks in, it just, it literally makes me piss my pants. Like, I love it. Love it so much. So apart from your brunches, which I'm super buzzing to come to, by the way, you've also got your brand new book out. Yes. A Fundamental Guide to Life. Learn to live, laugh, love. <laughs> like a true one um tell us everything i'm fucking buzzing for that as well so two years ago when when it was all started getting a little bit bigger i got contacted by a publisher and they were like do you know what do you want to write a book on 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 you know how to be a hun and i was like yeah of course i would i mean you know writing a book you know is is total hun behavior you i know? would have loved to have seen that boardroom of like stuffy old men in suits like yeah. and a woman pitching the hun book to them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would have been brilliant yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is it. Um, yeah, so um, so they said, oh, yeah, do you want to do it? And I was immediately like, oh, my God, yeah, absolutely. And then they said to me, they went, do you want a ghostwriter? And I, like, having a ghostwriter is peak hun, I think, like full oh, Katie, yeah. Katie oh, Price, cool. you go have a ghostwriter. And then I thought, no, do you know what? My page is, is, is it's my thoughts and it's my lingo and it's my that. I was like, I'm going to do it. And then it was at that moment that I absolutely shit my pants and thought, Oh, bear in mind, I just signed the contract to do it. And I literally had a meltdown in my spare room. I was like, fuck, I've just agreed to write a book. However, um, just to put it out there, there's a lot of pictures in there and it's not war, war and peace. I'm not downplaying it, but, um, you know, it, you can you can read it in a couple of days, um, <laughs> which is great. A perfect poolside read. Um, but basically, it was we, we, we put it down into three chapters, live, love and laugh, obviously. 
-huh. the first um chapter is all about like how to live your life as a hun so it's kind of like um you know going into work as a hun you know sort of navigating the group chats as a hun mm -hmm. planning a holiday as a hun second part is love where it's like all about your relationships with your fam for your friends and your family you know planning the perfect hen do the hun worthy hen do and then the last part then is uh, laugh which is sections uh, of, of things which feature on the page that we laugh about so for example um, there is a it's, it's quite an interactive book as well there's quite um, there's a page where the readers can do <laughs> this is so stupid do the Nadine Coyle finding a passport maze so there's like a maze you know you know like annuals that you used to have as a, as a kid it's basically like that but you know you're not finding Desperate Dan's stake you're finding Nadine Coyle's passport in her maze through her web of lies um yeah <laughs> So it's yeah, it's just very frivolous and very silly, and um, and yeah, hopefully it will bring a, a, a nice smile and look. I think it's I think it's the ultimate mini coffee table book for Hans. I love honestly, babe, I love it. I'm away on holiday next week, and I am going to get myself a coffee. <laughs> um, Gareth, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Like, oh, I've thank you so much. Smiled and laughed <laughs> nonstop. I know we're doing a little bit of a pod swap. I can't wait to join yeah. you on yours too. Um, just before I let you go here at Biggie Pets and the Secret Two, we always ask our gorgeous guests to give our lovely listeners a kind of um, some pearls of wisdom, I suppose. And I think we'd just be doing you a huge injustice if we didn't ask you what your secret is to being the ultimate hun. I think the secret to being the ultimate hun is that every situation and thing that you go into, you've got to go into it all huns blazing. <laughs> <laughs> just just unashamedly all hands blazing just do it and you know i know you say huns are like all about the zinfandel and the brunches and like the memes and all the rest of it but deep down huns are just like super lovely women who want to have a good time yeah. and like be around their friends and embrace life and do things their own way right absolutely live oh. you live live your life as a true hun with a little bit of kindness heart and a lot of sass oh <laughs> there you are fucking hun <laughs> and i love it Get that on a decal at the back of your kitchen. That would, that would that would finish off that stunning vista of your kitchen. Lovely. I don't think it would go with my current Scandi aesthetic, but I'll think about it. Well, listen, listen, are you really a true hun? Are you really a true hun? <laughs> I'll think about it, right? <laughs> in, in a couple of episodes time when I'm watching your podcast back, if I don't see it in a nice calligraphy in between those two cupboards, I'll be absolutely seething. If I put it on a pillow, will you put one for all? I will, yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice pillow. <laughs> <laughs>